thank you all for joining. Talking at online conferences is odd. So my first request, if you use Twitter, please um, tweet at me. If you're on the SourceCon Slack, please use that as well. Um, otherwise, it feels a bit weird and it feels like I'm talking to myself, where I'm not. I'm talking to this little ninja and I'm talking to this little Lego man. Um, but apart from that, it looks like we are good. Um, Sorry, just checking. Yeah, I am live. Thank you, Bill. Uh, right. So today we're going to talk about the truth, the truth about oracles. Um, this talk came about, well, obviously it was meant to be in Austin doing this, but, you know, it's great to see that source to adapt and uh, run this online. But I'm a huge fan of testing. I'm a huge student of testing and oracles within the teaching of exploratory testing gets talked about quite a lot but not so much in the space of automation. Even though there has been a lot of work in this space, not, it's not recently, it's not common to talk about it. And I wanted to change that. I wanted to dig in, be a student again, and see what I can discover about oracles. Um, so we're just gonna set timer. Excellent, okay. So what we're gonna try and cover in this session. So what I'd hope you'll be able to do by the end of this talk, um, so number one, describe what an oracle is. It would help, right? A talk about oracles, it would help if you knew what they were. Uh, then we're going to try and work out where they come from, uh, how, they, how they appear in your world, how they arrive in your head. Uh, and then we're going to look at, oh, I broke my own slide. Um, then we're gonna look at the communicating the importance of oracles and why that matters. Then we're going to look at the different types of oracles that exist which is important because they help you design your tooling. Um, then we are going to identify the right tooling to codify your oracles because we're talking about automation and therefore we want to increase our usage of automation and there's many ways we can do that which aren't so commonly used. And it was quite interesting listening to, I think Diego earlier from uh, Forrester and um, talking about some of the, um, his predictions around AI. And I think the problem in that space is an oracle problem. And then we're going to look very finely at just at the importance of naming, how you name your checks very briefly, but it's important if you're going to focus on oracles, it's important to name them well, not just for yourself, but for people who inherit your solutions in the future. All right, so let's dive into it. So what are oracles? It's the best place to start. So I'm going to have a bit of fun with this. Um, I love teaching. I think it's best to have when you have a bit of fun. Um, so number one. Ooh, number one, ah, there we go. Is there a problem here? I want you all to answer that to yourselves. I've just given you this monstrosity uh, for your dinner. Um, is there a problem here? Let yourselves decide. Now, some of you are going, hell, pineapple on a pizza. Hell no, definitely not. Whereas some of you are going, oh, it's pretty tasty that I'd eat that. There's oracles at play there. Is there a problem here for some people? Absolutely. For others, no, nah, this is good. Those people are wrong, by the way, just so you know. Uh, is there a problem here? So this is a car leasing company in the UK. And this is genuinely their website. This is their brand. This is what they're known for. But would you lease a car from this website? I don't think I would. <laughs> but is there a problem here? And then finally, you've walked into the bar. Oh, I yeah, can't wait to go back to a bar when all this is over. But you've walked into a bar, and these are the beers that are on offer. Is there a problem here? So if you've not made the connection, oracles are how you identify if there's a problem. So there's a few definitions by people who have done a lot more work in this space than myself. So we'll start with uh, Mr. Michael Bolton. Um, an oracle is an heuristic, we'll get to that, that's important, principle or mechanism by which someone recognizes a problem. So if I had walked into that bar, I would leave because I ain't drinking that. I'm, I'm a hipster, I like a bit of my craft. So I, there'd be a problem in that bar for me. Whereas other people, my dad, he would drink any generic lager you give him, he's quite happy. Um, but then we look into Doug um, Hoffman. He's done a lot of work in this space and we'll mention Doug quite a bit throughout this um, talk. An oracle is the mechanism by which you tell whether or not the software is behaving as expected. It consists of a combination of information and comparison. So we've gone a little bit further there. We've taken some information 
and we're comparing it to something to decide if it's acceptable or if there's a problem. Now, I mentioned heuristic and it's important. If you're not familiar with the term heuristics, um, I actually wrote a very good article with, um, uh, with my partner, Sarah, about this, um, and I'll share it on Slack or if someone can do that while we're watching even better. Um, but it's on the Ministry of Testing. It's called Mind the Gap. Now, heuristics are fallible way to solving a problem. So it's things that you try in the hope that you're going to progress. Whereas an oracle is a way of identifying a problem, but they are always flawed. Just as we've seen with the pizza example, some people perfect pizza. There isn't an overall oracle for a pizza. Now, if there's any Italians watching, they would probably argue that there is, um, but there isn't. So therefore, oracles are heuristics because they're not always going to work. They're not true. They're not. They're not. Um, they're not one for everyone. They're varied and they're contextual. Now, my own personal preference when I talk about it, I'm not the strongest with words, so I try and keep things as simple as possible. But for me, it's a valuable way to identify or recognize a problem. So identify is very clear cut. Um, I can see the problem. Whereas recognize might be, there's, there's something not right here. I don't know what it is yet, but there's something not quite right. So that's what, that's what an oracle is. It's a way of identifying a problem. And there's many different types, which we'll get to. Okay, so where do oracles come from? If they exist and I'm telling you that you all have them, where do they come from? Now, there's a few different bodies of work on this. I'm going to take Michael Bolton's um, few hiccups, which was co-created with um, James Back. Um, I prefer this one because it's easier to relate to. There is many different types of oracles, but they broke these down nicely into what they call consistencies. So a lot of people get oracles from these places. They get them from history. So you might have seen another, uh, you might have seen this problem in the past. So therefore you're going to try and use that existing knowledge that you have to um, apply it to this system. And therefore you would then decide if there's a problem here based on that. Image, one of my favorite things, not, that's, no, that's not true, <laughs> makes you sound well dull. Uh, one of the things that I often observe is people forget to update copyright. And that's quite bad for your image. Um, often people have a lot of visual issues on their websites. That's not great for your image. You've just seen Ling's Cars website. That is their image, but for some people that is massively off-putting. Um, so therefore you can use things like that to check consistencies and to ask yourself, is there a problem here? Comparison, quite straightforward, comparing it to maybe other products or comparing it to previous products in your company or competitors' products. Um, claims is usually what we see in testing. So someone's claimed that the system does this. Um, maybe it could be a bad thing. It could be a good thing. It could be a product owner telling you that the system should do this. They're making a claim about the system. So you use that claim to see if it's true. User expectations. Oh, they've got loads of them, right? Um, but they are a source of Oracle. If the user's expectations of the software is good and what they mean, and it works really well, you can use that as an oracle. The product itself being consistent within itself. Um, so you're not having different like, you know, components and styles across your website, trying to be a bit consistent. Standards is a really good one. And um, we'll touch on that again a bit later, but the standards of in the world, there's IEEE -E 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 standards. Um, there's lots of standards around measurements and stuff like that. Familiarity. We are in a tech boom generation, um, you know, with pictures around and videos of of, um, of babies trying to swipe TV screens um, because they're familiar now with that. So as we move within our tech, the, ne this, the next generations, they're going to be a lot more familiar with certain things and they're going to expect systems to work in a certain way. Um, can you explain it? And then things around the world. Um, <clears throat> the world being what, you know, what literally the world, <laughs> stuff that goes on that you have in your heads. And then it's really important to remember that all oracles are heuristic, as we said. Yes, you can use these things to look for consistencies, but it doesn't mean there's a problem. They're going to help you maybe identify a problem. They are fallible. They're not guaranteed to work. <clears throat> okay, communicating the importance of oracles. So we now know what oracles are. We have a bit of a rough idea. Again, not only got 30 minutes, not going to go into the depths of it, but we have a rough idea of where they come from, where how you generate them, how they exist. So now if you know what they are, do you need to talk about them? Now, this is an interesting space because Ken Kainer 
says, well, you're not really going to go and start talking about oracles with people that aren't in testing. So it's useful for teaching people, but not necessarily useful for talking to other members of the team. However, you don't have to use the word oracle. They would be interested in hearing your oracle. So who's heard this statement? That's not a bug. That's a feature. Of course it is. To you, to me, it's a bug because we have different oracles. So what tends to happen is some people overrule, one person overrules the other person and you carry on. And sometimes you're left with this feeling of resent and sometimes you accept it and sometimes you try and fight your case. Now, when you try and fight your case or bug, bug advocacy, as, it, as we refer to it, your oracle is crucial. So you have to say, I believe this is a bug because, insert oracle, because it is not consistent with this part of the system because we had the same issue two years ago and this is what happened. So you have to provide that extra little bit and that extra little bit is your oracle. If you can't explain why something is a problem, it probably isn't a problem. So it's really crucial to be able to define and explain your oracles and it really helps get buy-in from your business. And it also really helps as we'll get to with your automated um, checks because then you'll be able to say, look, we can't move on. We need to do this. We need to fix that because of Oracle. So that's why communicating them is really important. You don't have to talk about Oracles, make that very clear. You don't have to use the word Oracle, but you have to explain why you think things are a problem and how you identified how that, how you identified that problem is the crucial piece. Okay, so let's compare and contrast different types of Oracles. So this list is from Doug Hoffman. I said we'll mention Doug a fair bit. We're going to, re we're going to revisit this list um, near the end of the talk as well. But we're going to have a quick uh, fly through this now. So regression oracles. This is the most common one we see. And I'm going to talk about how we get to this later. But this is where the system, you've observed the system do a certain thing and you're happy with it. What the system did made you happy. Therefore, you... You implement um, something that checks that it stays that way. The complete oracle, the unicorn, they don't exist. Um, we want them to, we would love them to, but there isn't one single source of truth. Um, so therefore, you very rarely ever come across this, but it's important to consider it because sometimes some people claim to be the oracle and, well, they're not. Um, consistency oracles, we just went through a list of those with a few hiccups, um, but as you know, comparing to previous things and being consistent in a, in a journey of, a, of an application. Um, things like constraints. So these were the standards that get mentioned in the consistencies. If you have a date of birth field, for example, in your system, you can't enter 14th of the 4th, 1986. And if your system does allow you to do that, that is a problem because that ain't a real date of birth. Um, so therefore, we get constrained sometimes by legal, stand, by legal certain things, standards, um, uh, com compliance and things along those lines. They're constraining oracles. Um, Self-verifying oracles are the type where you often see with data-driven stuff. So you put the answer in the data. So really common in mathematical areas, like you know, you say if we import values A, B, and C, then the answer should be Y. So you, the answer is, is within the test data and you basically build an algorithm to keep looping and looping and looping. Uh, state models, you've probably all come across lots of talks about model-based systems, but basically you design, you, 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 mod, you, um, you build a model, and you use that as your oracle to decide if the system is um, behaving as you would expect. Um, probabilistic oracles, so these are things that you would expect your system to do based on its context and its domain. So the easiest example I use is a shopping cart, um, like a, a shop, an online shop. You would expect an online shop to have a shopping cart. Within that shopping cart, you would expect to be able to see your products that you just added into your cart. You would expect to be able to remove your products. Common things that we now associate with specific types of applications. Handcrafted oracles, this is the ones that you are all most familiar with. This is where you literally write the oracle in code or you write it as an expected result somewhere. Uh, and then the human oracle is where you just use your head. So there's nothing explicit, it's completely tacit. It's all in your head. You've been given a piece of information and you go, whoa, no problem here. 
or you go, hey, perfect. So this is this is Doug's list. I haven't dived into my own. I'm quite satisfied with this list. I have I don't use a few of them and explain that in a while, but as a good entry point into oracles, which is my intention with this talk, these gives you a good sense of the different types of, let's say, assertions to talk about in the automation language that you can do within your automation. Okay, which leads us on nicely to uh, this quote by Doug. Our ability to automate testing is fundamentally constrained by our ability to create and use oracles. As humans, we are incredible information gatherers and processors. We can take things just immediately put in front of you and instantly be like, no, wrong, that pizza's got pineapple on it. That's, that's, a, that's a sin, take that away from me. You do that almost instantly. Um, whereas when you come to be, when you come to design automated checks, you have to design and create the Oracle which means you need to understand your oracles as we've gone back to some of our earlier, um, earlier learning outcomes. So therefore, if you don't know what they are and you can't define them, you can't automate it. So it's a crucial skill. But some of our oracles come from certain places. As I said, they can be given to you, they're explicit. It could be part of a spec. It could be given by a person who matters. It could be a standard. But a lot of the time, it's our own judgment or the team's judgment that's going into our automated checks. And that means that oracles are crucial. Now, oh, too far. Uh, this is, the, for me, this is the com most common approach that I see to people designing automated checks. And it's the thing that is so important that gets often overlooked that if you don't have the skills to do this, you are going to create pretty bad automated checks. And we focus so much on tooling and code that we take our eye off this, which is really crucial. So no automated check is currently, most of them, is not crea isn't created without some sort of human testing taking place. So when we do that human testing, as we just discussed, we're free to use all the oracles that we have and we do some testing. Then we then, handcraft, the type of oracle we just heard about, our oracle using whatever tooling we're doing. And then we then run it and we see the system behave how we would hope and then we say that's okay. So we actually go on a journey through different types of oracles. Now some people go, oh no, I'm an automation engineer, I'm a setter, I don't, I don't do testing. Every single one of you goes through this flow when you're creating an automated check. You think you know how the system works, but no one ever just writes it and submits it into the code base. Most people run it first, and it's that act of running it where it changes into um, a regression type of oracle because now you've seen the system behave that way. You've seen it physically happen, you accept it, and therefore it's now based on that. Um, so, Here's a great example of how oracles are designed. So this is my um, blog, mine and Mark uh, Winteringham's blog, automationintesting.com. We added a feature right there in the middle of the screen when the next training will be. And you can see I've used this slide before. Now, with that, um, with that training there, it was to promote the training and let people see that we had training upcoming. So it's there, it's on the screen, it's great. Now, being true to my automation roots, I wanted to design some automated um, checks for this so I don't break my own website. So we did. And as most of you might think, well, if you were asked to design this, um, have, take 10 seconds now to think what would you do, what testing would you do to make sure that training is on the website? And while you do that, I'll take a drink. Okay, I'll tell you what I did. I did what 90% of our industry does. I wrote a Selenium, oh, well, it doesn't have to be Selenium, but I wrote a UI check that checks that that text is on the screen. Perfect, right? If that text is there, clearly it's working, happy days. This is actually what happened a few weeks after we wrote that automated check. Um, as you can see, it passed. It passed because the training is on the screen. Now, here's a question for you. 
would you buy training from me if this was my website about teaching how to do automated testing, automated checking? Probably not. I designed a terrible oracle because what I actually cared was that you saw a nice branded looking site and I took my eye off the fact, yes, I want the training to be there, but I also was meant to entice you and encourage you to look at it. The red is important. It draws your attention. I didn't design that into my oracle. I didn't design that into my scenario. So therefore, it failed. The oracle is still there, but it's not quite what we're after. <clears throat> okay. So now we need to look at identifying the right type of tooling. Now, I am not going to name specific tools here. There is simply too many tools to name, and you will undoubtedly offend someone because I won't mention a certain tool. So I'm not going to name tools. It's about the types of tools that you're going to need. <clears throat> so as a brief recap, we've identified the oracles help, we've identified, identify, <laughs> we've identified the oracles help us identify problems. So they're important, they're needed. They're needed to be able to tell us that things have changed, the system might be behaving in a way that we don't like, there might be a problem. Always remember that is there a problem here is how I like to think about oracles. Now, but when we create our automated checks, we do so after some period of testing. Now, this could be literally 30 seconds while someone creates the code, or it could be a whole nother team that's done a load of testing and giving you uh, the nod to say you can just automate this as it is, it works. Um, or, <clears throat> excuse me, or someone's told you that this system is good and you can just carry on. So now that we've got to that stage and we we're, the system is happy and there is no problems, how do we design our oracles? Because oracles are designed to identify problems or recognize a problem, but there isn't any, the, the system's good. So we, what we have to do is we have to, we have to reverse our thinking. So we have to imagine the system in a broken state. We have to think what would the system do if it were broken? Or some of you probably have a broken system and it's just there in front of you, but if the system is in a broken state, uh, if the system isn't in a broken state, sorry, it might be hard for us to identify the oracle. So therefore we have to imagine it being in a broken state, or if we can, we put it into a broken state so we can actually see how the system behaves and then code an oracle. But that would be for the specific type of regression oracle. So therefore we have to imagine the system broken and if it was broken, what would happen? Um, so therefore, if this field doesn't equal 14, there might be a problem here. If that next training button isn't red, there might be a problem here. So therefore, I design checks to do that. But in order to do that, I need to design on the lowest level possible. So if you imagine a cake, different layers within the system, you need to use your system knowledge, which is crucial. Again, a lot of SEDEX automation engineers don't like to talk about testing, but it's crucial you use your system knowledge to identify which layer you think that problem would first show its face and then mitigate it there, if you have the skills and the testability to do so, which is a whole nother space. Here's a very quick visualization that I use. I call it visual task analysis. There's lots of stuff on the internet about this. But basically you go through the system and what happens at each stage about this scenario you're working with to try and identify where the problem could potentially show its face. And then that's the layer that you would want to do your automated check at. <clears throat> okay, so specific types of tooling. We're gonna go through these oracles. I've got rid of a few as you probably noticed, um, but I want to focus on these ones. Um, so the regression oracles we spoke about, this is where the system does something that you are happy with and you're using the system's generated information to verify itself. So this is things like gold master based kind of style tools. So think things like visual testing. The screen looks good. I take a copy of that screen and I use it to compare. The API response looks good. I compare it directly to another API response. Um, I'm comparing the system's own output against itself uh, to tell me if there might be a problem here. Consistency oracles, like we mentioned, um, most of the consistency oracles um, are handcrafted, as we'll get to at the bottom, but um, there's a lot of things like static analysis that you can use to 
check consistency across your applications. And I expect the AI space to really do a lot of stuff in here in the future. Um, Self-verifying oracles we mentioned, but think data-driven tools where you just pump a lot of data into a system and you expect an outcome at the other end. Like I remember a talk by Doug where I think it was Doug and he, he put two cities into Google Maps. He did Manchester to London and got told that that was 200 miles. And then he flipped it and did London to Manchester and then checked that that was also roughly 200 miles. Uh, and they left that running and did an insane number of permutations. Um, the constraint oracles, you're going to need, um, you can use libraries out there that tell you the certain types of data and whether it matches. So you can literally build a simple tool, download a library that checks data bursts for you and just run through every single data birth in your system against an oracle that's been given to you by the standard, by the constraints. There's lots of libraries on GitHub around doing that. Now the probability, prob 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 um, the probabilistic oracles. Now this is a really interesting space. So there's a lot of AI tools in this space that uh, examining in your app, trying to understand what it does or what space they think it does and then trying different things on your app. Um, so there isn't a lot of, I don't believe there's a lot of current people doing this kind of testing themselves yet because it's you need models, you need something to drive it. Uh, and I think the AI space have already seen the likes of test.ai doing some incredible things in that space, especially when they think it, you know, it might be a shop, it might be a it might be a video playing app. Therefore, if it's a video playing app, I'll try and play and I'll try and pause and I'll try and show captions, et cetera, et cetera. But most of us have handcrafted oracles, uh, which is where we use an assertion library such as JUnit to create our own oracles be it text on the screen, be it CSS classes, be it API objects. We've designed them ourselves and we use tooling to do it. So we're still providing the Oracle, whereas some of our previous examples, be the Oracle is being generated by tooling. And then finally, humans. Um, as again, humans feature throughout this, but this is where we get automation just to give us data. Just give us a load of stuff. Has anyone ever ran something like OWASP? Uh, the proxy um, against, sorry, Zap proxy against a website, it just gives you noise. And then you have to read through it. You're now the Oracle. And there's a, you can do so much with automation in that space. Get the robots to do all the boring gathering of information and use just your human brain to analyze it. Okay, we're coming up to near the end now. Um, a few important things though to factor in around oracles. Are oracles are fallible as we mentioned? And all, so another way of looking at it is all oracles are partial. You can never fully check something. So a great example at the bottom here is all your tests passed, which is great, and they all passed, but the execution time was double. Now you probably didn't write an assertion for that. That wasn't part, you didn't, you didn't codify that oracle but you might have noticed it at another time. So we often do stuff like this. My website example is a prime candidate for that. I, yes, my check passed, but there was still a problem. So all oracles are partial. So you need to be automating at several different layers, several different parts of your app with very tailored specific oracles to give yourself a comfortable amount of coverage, but you have to remember you will never fully have it because you can't. Uh, okay, then the final section, the importance of naming your checks to identify oracles. There is not a lot to talk about here um, because it's a, such a complicated space and code and different frameworks rule it. But intent, intent, intent. Your automated, the name of your automated checks needs to clearly define your intent because otherwise, if someone else inherits it, they're going to look at your oracle instead to work out whether this test needs changing or not. But if you've clearly defined what you were trying to do, I was trying to test the next, trying to test that the next training was on there, then that is the clear intent. And then that was it. The um, apart from that, make sure your oracle is clearly defined. Um, and the, sorry, for more reading on this, I'll share the slides with SourceCon. Uh, obviously, I need to give credit to my icons that I used. Uh, you can find more information about this here, and I might have time for a single question. Let's have a look at Slack. Uh, please post questions on Slack. I will get back to them um, after uh, the talk. 